Hey guys, uh, got a Dodge Dakota next to me here with the 47 V, or excuse me, 37 V6 in it that needs a water pump. So I'm going to take you through how to, whoop, hang on, how to put a water pump on a Dodge Dakota with a V6. This is actually a fairly simple job. First thing you have to do, get underneath the truck and then right. Uh, let me squeeze my fat butt in here. Right back, right there, is the drain for the radiator. So, we're just gonna, sometimes, you gotta be careful, they are plastic. Just enough to break it loose. Got my catch pan down there. And then, should start peeing. I'm gonna scoot that back. That way, I can actually take, very carefully take the whole plug out. And I won't have antifreeze all over the place because I'm gonna take the radiator cap off now. So, I'm back up top, pop the radiator cap, and, oops, sorry. We should see the coolant stream take off. All right, guys, this is an 06 Dakota 37 V6, as you can see right there. Uh, water pump is leaking. Now, uh, as you'll see from the previous clip, I've already drained the radiator. Next thing before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this battery cable we're going to replace the water pump we're going to replace the serpentine belt at the request of the customer and I'm going to try and move through this job as quickly as possible now first things first you're going to have to take the fan and the fan shroud out to give me better access to the pump uh, use a trim panel tool you can pop Get these little plastic rivets out. Actually, yeah, that one's those have got to come out as well. So, Okay, there's two that connect this piece to the fan shroud. There's three more up across the top of the core support. And if you take your time and work them out, they'll come out in one piece. If it's cold, they get brittle, you'll break them off. And you'll have to replace them like that. That happens. You can just push them right through the hole, they'll fall out the bottom. And then this one started. There we go. Oh, that one broke. That happens. Like I said, we'll replace them with new ones. Alright. Now get that off, I'm going to have to slide the overflow off. And we'll set that off to the side. Now, two 13s hold down the fan shroud.
little magnetic parts trays work. That, that, that thing works great. Now, the fan shroud is free. But, in order to get it out, the fan also has to come off. Now, most of these, if the fan, if the fan has left-handed threads on it instead of standard threads that we marked on the housing. All right, I've got the fan shroud loose. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is take the serpentine belt off, which is a 15 millimeter. And if your ratchet is pointed straight up and down, you rotate the tensioner toward the driver's side. And then we flip the belt off. And this belt was the owner wants to replace it, and it's a good thing because it's pretty well stretched. That tensioner didn't have much tension left, so we're just going to take it completely out, get it out of the way. Now, with any luck, I have some better angle to get in here and get the pliers around the pulley. Get a nice tight grip on it. I'm not worried about damaging this pulley because the, there we go, it broke loose. The new water pump comes with a new pulley. So if I ding, if I ding the pulley up a little bit, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Now, I should be able to spin it off. get close to it being threaded all the way out you want to be careful and make sure you have a good grip on the fan because if you don't and you drop it you can pop a hole in the radiator I have done that now in these trucks you can actually weasel the fan out with the shroud still in set it off to the side to the side and then I have to remove the idler pulley that's right here next to the tensioner check all my pulleys while I'm in here they're all good and tight they don't have any play but I have to remove this one to get to the water pump bolt that's hiding behind so it is a 15 millimeter and be careful when you pull it out because there are spacers and washers that you don't want to drop and then it's a 13 on the water pump bolts. keep them in order. I'm going to start at the bottom above the crankshaft. It's going to go there. I'm going to work my way around just in case any of them are different. See, there's a different one. So that one. Ugh. <sighs> 
And these pumps use a O-ring, not an actual gasket. And you can see where it leaks some over here. And it's really hard to see, but down in behind the pulley, you can see where there was definitely some leaking out. The bearings don't have much play in them, but... All right. <laughs> As always, double check the instructions that come with the new parts. This one comes with a new O-ring. You just push it into the groove. You don't need any silicone with this. Just make sure you get it all the way in the groove, all the way around. I didn't, it's not actually tight, that way I can still move the water pump around to line up the holes. If you start tightening them before you get them all started in the holes, you'll, you'll end up with bolts you can't start. And the holes won't line up. Okay, they're all started. I'm not going to run them I'm not gonna tight now, I'm just going to run them down snug. Okay, now I'll go back through and we'll tighten them all by hand. I'm tightening them all by hand because that little impact will put out 120 foot pounds and if I, if I accidentally hold the trigger just a little too long, I will severely over torque them and I can actually break the bolts or break the pump housing. Okay, just double check, make sure these are still tight. Now, that is on. We can reinstall our tensioner pulley. Back of the box, belt diagrams. Let's see, GM Chrysler 474937. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Okay, so we go from here. 
over that, around that, up to the top. From here, we go down and around the water pump. So in the meantime, I'm going to slide it off of that pulley around the water pump like that and then oh crap it's always easier to it's always easier to get to slide the, the ah it's always easier to slide the belt on the smooth pulleys because you don't have to fight it across the ribs Sure you got it lined up all the way around and release. Fan trim. And this is all reverse order of removal. So there's two pins right down here on the bottom of the fan trail. Where is it? There's there's one here. There's a locating tab here. You need to make sure you get those back where they're supposed to go. That keeps the bottom of the fan shroud from getting back and into the pulleys. Slight thing, I can The rotation of the engine will tight, tighten the fan, not loosen it. So, just a couple good smacks with a hammer. We have our upper shroud, our upper air diverter. more little push pins to replace the ones that broke. Okay. Now. There we go. That's all nice tight. Sorry guys, you have a bit of a jump start, but you can see as I pull it back and it sucks the hoses flat. It's hard to suck the other one down.
there are a few little chunks of, you know what, I'm going to use new antifreeze because there's a bunch of chunks of dirt in this, so I'll be back here in just a second with some new stuff. Got three and a half gallons of any make any model antifreeze mixed up here. I'm going to give a second to put the rest of the antifreeze in jugs and I'll top off the radiator and go. Your overflow hose back on. His overflow bottle is completely dry. I'm going just a little bit above the max. That way. It will purge out any small air pockets into the overflow, and when it does, it'll suck the antifreeze back in. Okay, the radiator cap back on. it's good and tight and cap off our overflow there we go trash and we're ready to do spark plug. 